Uh, I've just started recording now, so if you want to kick it off. Uh, uh, there's one more person no. joining. Yay. OK, so sh should I start then? Yeah, you can start. I think uh, if anyone else will join, they'll have the recording if ever they want to go back and see what they missed. All right, cool. Yeah, so uh, welcome, everyone. Um, I'm, I'm happy that you're interested in, in Air Console and the possible uh, cooperation uh, between, between students and us. Um, my name is Alice. Uh, I am the head of games at Air Console, which means that I am uh, responsible for what games get made for the Air Console platform. Uh, I work with a lot of external developers. Um, some we commission for games, so we pay them to make the games that we want to. Uh, with others, we work on a on a more like uh, voluntary basis. So they make games, and we just give feedback. Uh, but it's still their own games. One more person, welcome. Um, and um, yeah, I'm just gonna I'm gonna give a relatively brief presentation of what Air Console is, what we do, why it's interesting for U.S. students to make a game for our platform, and what you can like expect to gain from that. Afterwards, I'm going to give you a short demo of how it looks, um, like how you how you would go about starting uh, game development in Unity with our uh, plugin. Um, and then I, I hope to keep that brief and then open basically open the the open a round of, of questions um, because I'm not super familiar with your your, your needs and your uh, backgrounds and everything. So I'll just. Do a quick intro, and then we can have like a more open discussion, and we'll see what interests you about Air Console, and I can uh, go into more detail about um, whatever uh, it is that you want to know more about. All right, um, so you should all be seeing my screen, I believe. Um, right, yes, OK. So the basic idea of Air Console is that it's a cloud-based gaming platform uh, where your browser is the console and your smartphone is the game pads. Or the game pads. That's words. One more person joining. OK, cool. Um, so what actually happens on a more technical level is that um, the game runs locally in WebGL or like HTML5, basically it's a web game that runs on your local computer. So it's not a streaming service. It's um, it's just in the web browser. And uh, on the phone, you basically have just a website that sends messages to the screen. So we do, of course, have a mobile app, but it's not so much a mobile game. It's really just uh, a browser that uh, presents like the, the, or it's really just a website with where you have the buttons where you can interact. Um, right, a bit of background about our, uh, about our company. Um, we're a startup from Zurich, Switzerland, um, which is also where I am now, although uh, of course at the moment we're uh, all working from home again. Our company was founded in 2015 and Air Console has been live sin since like the fall of 2015. Um, so we've been around for, for five years now. Um, we have gotten about 160 games. These range from like big projects that we've commissioned with a comparatively big budget to like smaller game jam games that were made within a few days or perhaps a week. We also have other student projects on there of, of like people who did like sort of a semester project um, in a small group of students. So the the games have quite a quite some range in terms of um scope and and also quality of course so we have we have small and like kind of niche artsy games we have more like more widely accessible polished games it really there's there's some range um we have uh all in all we've had about over seven million players if if that number is still accurate um we have our, our periods of growth, of course, like we, we did really well this year, thanks to everyone being stuck at home and having nothing to do. That was actually really beneficial for us. Um, uh, I, I, what I didn't actually have on here, the, the way we monetize the platform is by offering a subscription. So if you're an Air Console player, uh, you can play some of the games for free. But if you want to get full access to the full platform, to all games without limits, without ad breaks, you get the Air Console Hero subscription. 
Um, and developers on the platform get a share of um, based on how much time players spend with their game. We have a network of over 7,000 external game developers. Of course, not all of those 7,000 have actually completed a game uh, for Air Console, but there's a lot of people who have, at some point or another, checked out our plugins, tried our dev tools, etc. cetera. Um, this also, um, like, part behind this is that we've done corporations with the Global Game Jam for the past two years, where we uh, we sponsored a diversifier uh, that, that brought us a lot of, a lot of attention from uh, from game developers who wanted to try new things, and our company is is pretty small. We're eight people at the moment. Nine next week, actually. We're getting a new intern. <laughs> right. Um, so now that you know, like the the basics of what makes what makes our platform, um, what makes a good game on our console. So as I mentioned, uh, you're using the smartphones as controllers. Um, which means that most of the time you will not want to just emulate a traditional gamepad uh, because due to the lack of tactile feedback, you have quite a few limits that you like where you cannot use it in the same way as a controller. But you also have a lot of advantages where you can do things that you couldn't possibly do with a traditional gamepad. Um, I'm, on the on the slide, you see a few examples of like controllers from like at the bottom a, a card game where you have like small interactive areas uh, that are like unique to each player um, and you you can you and it's a turn-based game so you have time to to select your card and you can do small interactive areas because you you have that time to look or for action-based games it's really important that you that you have big buttons that you can press blindly because you won't be looking down at your phone you're looking up at the screen and you need to hit those buttons without looking um, when it comes to smartphone controller design, um, what, what's really cool uh, is that we, we can do different layouts for different players and for different in-game situations, which allows for like asymmetrical game game design. So you can give like one player can can have this options and one player has this these options, um, and you can change the entire controller layout whenever there's like whatever is necessary so like uh we we have a, a bunch of games where you can like move from different to different stations for example so you you maybe have like a movement a movement thing on one hand and then you reach a point and then you have like a mini game that you have to complete or stuff like that um yeah you can of course also make use of the smartphone's functionality such as swiping input or the the, the gyroscope the motion detector which allows for some some like cool uh, possibilities. Um, I've already briefly mentioned secret information, which is handy for card games, but also for things like hidden role games, where you can, uh, something that is not usually possible in um, in local multiplayer games, because you actually do need to communicate, like for, for hidden information to, to work, you need to be able to communicate with each player individually, which is usually only possible through like, uh, online multiplayer, like if you think of something like Among Us, where you have, where you can talk to players individually, but we can offer something like that too. Um, and in terms of our audience, uh, we are a very casual gaming platform. We have uh, a very wide ranging audience of people. It's definitely not just hardcore gamers necessarily. It's uh, a lot of people, we have a lot of families playing. We have a lot of like friend groups with some experienced gamers and some very casual players uh so that's a lot of like a lot of variety in our user base um and that means that it's really important for our games to be understandable easily accessible uh they need to be very quickly satisfying and rewarding so like a, a strategy game where you need a 20 minute tutorial is not a really good fit for our console it's really um what works really well is if you get into it real quick and you do one interaction and you already have like the first satisfaction. So like if you're, if you're familiar with casual game design um, where, or like, especially in terms of like web or mobile games, we often talk about things like you have perhaps 10 seconds until a player grows bored with your game. If you don't give them the first like fix of something really satisfying happening. Uh, and those rules definitely apply to air console. Um, so yeah, casual accessible, polished. That's kind of uh, how, how we like our games to be. 
what does that mean for you as a developer? So as mentioned, you have a unique platform for game design due to these like separate controller layouts. You have a lot of uh, design tools to play around with, uh, which can be interesting from like an, an artistic perspective and a design perspective. As a student, when working with Air Console, you have the opportunity to gain experience in a lot of different areas. So like we have the, the Unity game development. Uh, I mean, you don't have to use Unity. We also support just like web games, anything then that can access our JavaScript API is, is fair game basically. But you have a regular game development in the game engine of your choice. Uh, you have the web development of, of doing, of making the controller. You have the, the business aspect of it because you'll be able to like publish the game on air console and work on the marketing of it. Um, you, you have the actual experience of launching a game in a store and, and trying to make it successful within that store. Um, and we also work with a lot of like, or we, we kind of encourage our developers to work with gameplay analytics because since games are accessible for free, it's, it's, it's just usually relatively easy to, um, to gather analytics data and, and get some like player insight. Uh, which you can then use to make the game better. So if you're like coming from a bit of a data analytical point of view and you, you want to know how do my players behave in the game and what improvements can I make based on that, then this is an interesting opportunity. And yeah, with, with an air console game, it's much easier for you to reach thousands or even hundreds of thousands of players. We have um, one student game that was made a few years ago, which like I said, is a semester project. And that has reached about a million players, I believe, with very little marketing effort from their side. So this is really by merit of being on Air Console, being available for a few years, and um, and being a, a good game that we've also pushed to our users in the past. So uh, this is not a kind of reach you are able to achieve by just pushing your game into a mobile store or pushing it onto Steam, even if you complete that whole process. So I really, I really fully believe that air console can be a, a really powerful tool for a for beginner and student game developers to reach a lot of people and to have that experience of uh of getting their game to a lot of players um when it comes to working with air console i'm i'm going to be your your primary uh contact person uh like i said i'm i'm officially like head of games um I can respond to emails or hop on a call if if you need anything. Um, I will not always able to like uh, prioritize and and do everything instantly because I also I manage uh, a bunch of games um, for our platform. But uh, generally, I'm I'm available and I can assist with both design questions, uh, monetization, marketing questions if you have them. Um, Web dev questions, I mostly forward to, to my colleagues, but basically I'm just, uh, if you need help with making games for Air Console, you, you go through me and I'll get you the help you need. Um, you also, of course, if you work for Air Console, you get access to Air Console Hero. I mean, if you're already a player, that might be interesting for you. If you're not already a player, I hope you try it. <laughs> so uh, you're obviously going to get uh, like a promo code for us to to access the whole platform, which is like useful for, for research on one hand and also just like, yeah, we we do let our players, uh, our developers play our stuff. <laughs> right. Um, then I want to present a quick uh, like one game idea that um, has been floating around in our team for a while. Um, that doesn't mean that this is the one thing we want you to do. But it is one thing that we think would make a lot of sense as a student project because it is uh, a project that has like a lot of potential in our opinion and that also offers a lot of like variety from a developer standpoint. Um, so let me quickly walk you through that. Uh, basically, we call it we call it three four air console, which is basically a joke based on uh, there was a game called One Two Switch when the Nintendo Switch was released, um, which is similar not really it's it's just it's also a, a collection of different mechanics um it's obviously not going to be called three four air console at the end it's just like how we refer to it internally so i put it in there um 
Right, so we imagine a polished party game pack um, with like different mechanics and uh, one overarching like scoring or something so that like you win individual games and then somebody wins basically the whole party. Um, with kind of that that use the controllers in unique ways uh where it's focused kind of less on less on the screen and less on like for example 3d graphics or uh like extensive animation on the screen um but mostly like just cool things that you can only do with this setup and one example that i want to make um is something that we had as a prototype a while back and, and it was a ton of fun. It's like, if you have five players, um, everybody's phone is like a, a station and you place it around the room that you're playing in. And then uh, one player after the other, you run from phone to phone and you tap everything. And as soon as you reach back, like at the, at the as soon as you've touched all the phones, your time is taken. And like, so it's like a, a sprinting running game basically, except, in your in your office or whatever i mean you can this is already fun as a reaction if you only do it like around one desk but it's more fun obviously to, have, to run to the end of the room um so this just as an example of like we wanted to be like something with like a bit of physical activity a bit of uh intuitive uh sorry innovative controller uh usage uh that you couldn't really do with with like just placing game pads around the room um and Another example would be that, for example, uh, that every player needs to hold their phone still. And they'll, if something triggers a gyroscope input on your phone, you're out. And the last person with their phone held still wins, which, of course, then promotes people to like shove each other and, and get that phone to shake. Um, yeah, so the focus of that would be on physical activity, group entertainment, really like a party activity, very, very, very casual. Um, the focus would be on the controller, but also like provide really good audiovisual feedback that you that you get and that you understand everything. That there's really no barriers uh, to to access that that fun and that uh, that unexpected use basically of of the controllers. Um, yeah, that's just one idea that we're like we've been wanting someone to do this for ages, and we will love you if you do. You don't have to, but I'm just saying we would really love it. <laughs> so. Um, that's just like one of the things that maybe someone wants to do. And if not, I'm open, of course, to hearing uh, your game ideas. Right. Um, so that's for like roughly the, 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 the introduction for Air Console. So now I'm just gonna really, actually, I think maybe we need, we do if a quick, a quick round of questions, like if there's anything urgent that you wanna know until this point. Um, and then I'll switch to Unity, and then afterwards we we open we open the the discussion completely. So I'll just check, but I don't think there's any questions yet, right? No. Okay. So nothing in the chat. Um, if you um, if you have anything, I'm just saying there's a Q and A tab in the Google Meet that I think the students are using. It's the little icon with like the triangle, square, and circle on it. Oh, Q and A. Um, oh, okay. It's a feature that well, like we had oh, a presentation yeah. from Google Stadia recently, so they made us. They were testing it out with us back then, so. Uh, okay, that makes sense. That now. Yeah, no, I see it now. I, I wasn't able to. I, I didn't see it before. Okay, so a uh, question about the input delay between phone and game. Um, it depends on your uh, on your internet connection on your setup, but under ideal circumstances, it is less than ten milliseconds. So very fast, barely no noticeable. Um, it can go up to like 100 milliseconds, but this low latency is really um, something that we pay a lot of attention to and something that we've optimized a lot. Um, I can send you, um, like if you're, if you're interested, I can send you a, a bit of technical background about how it is done. Uh, but basically we, we use WebRTC so that the message doesn't have to go over a server, but can actually be sent directly from the phone to the screen. Um, which results in this low latency that is really barely noticeable. Um, and about local uh, or online multiplayer, it is primarily local. Um, so it is, uh, at the moment, none of 
at the moment it is not uh, like none of our games really support true online multiplayer. That's not true. One game supports it, uh, but it's really that that would be on the game side. So Air Console itself runs locally, and if you want to play online at the moment, you have to use like a, a low latency screen sharing tool such as Parsec, which is what we use internally to test now that we're not in the same place. Um, but it's not really um, it's not part of the platform. We have been experiencing uh, experimenting with um, like screen sharing ourselves uh, during during the first lockdown here in March. We built like our, our tech lead built a, a solution basically himself to to do to offer that. Um, but it is still it is still low like it runs locally and we stream it. So it's uh, there's no true multiplayer uh, true online multiplayer uh, in in Air Console. And if you want to do that, you can, but then it's really, it's all on you. It's all on the game. Uh, you can upload a game to Air Console, which supports uh, local multiplayer, but it's not something that's really established as part of the platform. All right, um, then I will, uh, I will go over to Unity and just quickly uh, give you a, a short demonstration of how you would get started uh, making a game in Unity for Air Console. So, um, I, I have a, a complete. Can you see my my Unity? Is that does that work? Can you quickly give me a thumbs up or something? Yes. Okay. Good. Um, this is a completely empty project, um, and we have a plugin uh, for Unity that is available on the Unity Asset Store and for download on GitHub. Um, I have downloaded that already to save a little bit of time, but basically I'm just importing the Unity package file uh, with everything uh, that's that's part of that. Um, yeah, so as I said, find that on GitHub or on the Asset Store. And it's, of course, like linked in our uh, developer documentation. Um, we also, uh, we used to have plugins for uh, Construct 2 and Construct 3, but those aren't actively supported. So Unity is really the way to go if you want to work with a game engine. Um, but since like what our Unity plugin does is basically translate between Unity game engine and our JavaScript API, so to speak. Um, so if you have any other game engine, game development tool that you want to work with, if it's JavaScript based, you can probably get it working. It's just that we don't necessarily, we can't necessarily support every tool and, and help you with it. But if you're confident in your web dev abilities, that is absolutely something you can do. So um, now, the easiest way to start basically is wait, right here. In Air Console examples, we have a handful of um, of example scenes uh, that demonstrate different things. Um, we got a new question: Are there limitations related to the phone brand and for iPhone versus Android that affect Air Console? Not really. We try like there are there are some minor limitations. For example, like how vibrations work on Android versus iOS if you want to access those. But we generally try to make it simple. So for example, we provide an air console.vibrate function via the API. So you don't have to worry about that. Um, for the most part, like you should be testing your game both on iOS and Android because there's always like some unexpected uh, issues can always pop up where like something doesn't display properly on one or the other or, or some input isn't recognized. So ideally you test on both, but air console specific, there should not be, um, there should not be any differences. Right, so I'm going to uh, start with the platformer example that we have here. So I'm just opening this example scene quickly walking you through uh, what we what we have in here that's air console relevant. So uh, the the example here is is super simple. As soon as I start the game, we're going to spawn a player and the player will be able to like hop around these platforms. And everything that it really needs is this air console object right here. Um, this is where the magic happens. Uh, this is what what sets up the whole communication. Um, I have a few options here. Uh, probably the most important is what your controller is and which browser start mode you use. Uh, like that's that's relevant for for development. Um, I'm just going to quickly show it to you. Uh, so 
I'm going to set here to like the normal browser start mode, which means that I will connect my own phone to it. So now if I press play here, a browser tab will open. I'm just going to quickly pull it over here. A browser tab opens um, that, oops, can I, hello? That displays the Air Console start page for me uh, with this code. So what I do now is I co connect my phone using the Air Console app. I enter the, the code that you see on the screen. And now I get this in-game controller and I interact with the with the screen already. So this is like the the example scene uh, that you can also download and then instantly connect and have it working. Um, the only thing like for development, the phone and computer need to be in the same Wi-Fi. This is not the case for once once it's live. After that, it doesn't matter. But for local development, you'll need to be in the same network. So uh, yeah, here we see like this, this interaction already working. Um, now, as for how this works, what we like the main components here are a sorry, where is this? Uh, like a game logic script uh, and a and a controller script. So let me just quickly open these. Of course, in a more uh, complex game. This would uh, a, a lot more scripts will be involved, but just to show you like what's needed on a basic level. So the controller you just saw, um, I'm, I'm not sure how closely you saw it. It was basically four buttons. They were all gray, which is why you probably didn't see them, but like a left, right, jump and interact button. Um, so this, this is what we have here. We we use a like a CSS a style sheet to to display these buttons, um, and we use the hello, and we use the Air Console API to send a message to the screen. And uh, here, the actual HTML of the of the controller is just these four button elements and the fact that on touch they send the message to the screen. So this is very very basic like in terms of a website it's really just button elements air console send and how they look so that is the controller for for this platform game obviously if you um if you make a slightly more advanced game you would have like different different controller views different controller like different images on your controller that would all be handled in this controller file um but if you're familiar with web development it's uh that should be like you, you use JavaScript for this, you use HTML for this, and you use CSS for this. Um, yeah, so that's that's the the controller side of things. And on the in within Unity, if we switch to our uh, C sharp game logic script, not now Visual Studio, thanks. Um, again, we see it's pretty straightforward. Uh, we need to we use the the Air Console namespaces. We register the Air Console events that we need. So in this case, it's it's only a few. It's the message event, the on ready event, and the on connect event. So I can on connect is when a when a phone connects. So I can uh, assign that player a player number, for example, and assign their controller. Uh, and on message is to receive the messages from the screen. So on connect, I add this new player, which is just like instantiate the the, the game object. And uh, on message. I uh, I access the, the the player script and and move the player accordingly. So this player script is very simple, sim similar to what you would use in like if you used key input, but just instead of every player object listening for like the the key input, this just gets the the, the button input from the logic script that receives the air console input. Um, yeah, this is roughly how it works. You have a game logic script that listens for air console input, and you do with that what you want within your C-sharp, and you have your controller script where you 
format and out like shape what your uh, what your controller needs to be able to do. Um, so yeah, if you if you start from scratch, like if you start a new scene from scratch, all you basically do is create an air console game object. Okay, I can't do it because it already exists in the scene, but let's go into the empty sample scene. Um, we create the game, the air console object, and we drag a controller in here. If we don't have a controller yet, we take this empty controller template uh, and we, we edit our controller from there. And that's basically how you make an air console game. Um, this, uh, and, and add infinite complexity on top of that. <laughs> um, there's also, uh, I have a, a tutorial video on YouTube. Um, if you Google Air Console Unity tutorial, you also get a quick walkthrough of um, how to do all that, but it's it's very similar to what I just showed you. Um, yeah, so the, the, the goal of this is like to, to make it um, relatively simple. Like if you're already familiar with, uh, with C Sharp and with a bit of web development, it should be relatively straightforward for you to implement. Yeah, um, I recommend actually in any case, like if you're remotely interested, just download the plugin, open these example scenes, make some changes, see what you can do. See if you can understand the individual example scenes because like each of these showcases some different um, different functions of the Air Console plugin and uh, like the Air Console API. Uh, and if you look through these scripts, you can already get an insight into a lot of the functionality. Uh, and for the most part, they're like commented and we explain why we do things which way. So that should already give you a, a quite a quite a decent overview. Right. Um, yeah, I think I'm gonna, um, I'm going to leave it at that for the demo. So I am still available for, for questions. If you, um, like, if you're interested, let me know. You can always reach me uh, per email. Um, and uh, yeah, I mentioned, I briefly mentioned it at the beginning, uh, but I, I really think Air Console is a cool opportunity for students. I think uh, it's, it's a good, a really cool, way to to publish a game and to get it played um and we can help you with that so like we can we can serve as your external support your producer in a way and your publisher which is an experience that you don't really get practice wise just anywhere so i think this is really valuable and i i would like when i think about what projects were interesting for me back at uni and when i think about which like skills I see lacking in developers. I think this is something that will be useful for a lot of people. I don't know if that applies to you all. I don't know your skill sets, obviously, but I do think we provide something valuable uh, by, by offering a cooperation of this kind. Um, yeah, that's about it. Um, I would love to, to hear your questions and your thoughts and, uh, if anything didn't make sense, just let me know and I can repeat. I did see we got another question. Is there any fees to be on the Air Console platform? Um, you don't need to pay. So you uh, download the plugin for free and you publish your game for free. Uh, we do take a revenue share. So here, just real quick, developers.airconsole.com is where you find all the information you need to develop for Air Console uh, that goes for plugins, libraries, guides, uh, design advice, best practices, checklist for launch, everything. And what you find here is our uh, like revenue split. Um, like I said, developers, uh, sorry, pl players use a service called Air Console Hero, which is a premium subscription. They pay, depending on their like market and where they are, they pay three or $5 per month. And, uh, from that, we have a transaction fee that goes to the Google and Apple app stores. Uh, we have a cut that Air Console takes. Oops, yeah, no, let's make that bigger actually. We have a cut that Air Console takes and we have the net game revenue, which is then distributed among games. So 
what you pay for the platform is this share of your revenue. But you do not um, have to invest any money. It's just you get this, <laughs> basically. Um, let me see, we have another question. Is there a difference between 2D and 3D games in terms of performance on Air Console? Um, hard to tell, to be honest. So there's two different differentiations that we make. Um, we have one differentiation between, uh, or like, or rather, the differentiation between 2D and 3D doesn't necessarily matter to us. What does matter, kind of, is Unity games versus pure HTML and other engines games. Because a lot of um, devices that our users use to access uh, air consoles, such as tablets, some smart TVs, old computers, are not able to run uh, Unity games because they don't support WebGL or they don't support um, advanced graphics or they don't have enough RAM, stuff like that. Um, and those people, those players can still access and use and enjoy sort of simpler games. Um, but the difference here is not whether you use Unity for 2D or for 3D, it's just whether you make a, a game with an engine that is, uh, or like whether you game, make a game with Unity or whether you make a game with like simply some other form of HTML5 uh, game engine. Um, if we quickly look into our game ranking, uh, this is public by the way, airconsole.com slash insights gives you a list of uh, which games are performing how. Um, it's a bit of a mess because this is strongly influenced by which games we place where in the store and um, which games are currently available for free because there is a rotation of like what games are available for free and what which you need a subscription for. So there is some, as you can see, like some motion in this graph, but it does give you an impression of which games are at the top and which games are at the bottom in, in regards to performance. Uh, so if we look at this, um, Whoops, no, no. Whoops. Go Kart Go Air, the current top game, is a 3D like kart racing game in the vein of something like Mario Kart. And now I reloaded the page, and this takes ages to load because of the, this is our back end and nobody cares about optimizing it. Uh, right, so Go Kart Go Air, 3D game. Flink to the Finish, 3D game. Burning Rubber Air, uh, so Flink to Finish, like a physics based um, puzzle game uh, for two to four players. Uh, Burning Rubber is another racing game. 8-Bit Fiesta is a 2D game. So that's a like 2D, highly polished, very simple, straightforward like party game collection. Um, let me have a look. Yeah, so it's it's really, the, the graphics are very simple. But So this is one of our top games. Um, Snowboard Buddies is a 3D snowboarding game. Melbit's World is also a 3D puzzle game. Uh, so these, these are mostly 3D, but then we have something like The Neighborhood, which is this like Angry Birds team versus style game where you uh, play against each other uh, and like have to hit each other's house and it collapses. So another like, this is a Unity game, but it's 2D. Um, and then we also have games though that are coming right here, like Fartwork, Friends Quiz and Trivia, which are all HTML, uh, sorry, yeah, HTML games. Uh, made without Unity that run on a lot more machines. So you can see that these are also in our like top 15. And these are basically turn-based, text-based games um, that do not have any 3D visuals that are just, um, yeah, just UI-based basically. So just uh, prompts and buttons and everything. And this can definitely also work and, and can, um, can be successful on the platform. We have a handful of such party games, which are like, 2D, but um, 2D and text-based and turn-based and, and fairly simple in terms of visuals, but they're, uh, they provide a good party game experience, so they're successful. And we also have uh, down here a bunch of 3D games that are pretty and fun and fine, but they just don't perform because they're not accessible, have no depth, are not interesting for longer than five minutes to play. That's kind of like the the popular the popular issues with uh, with games at the bottom. Um, we don't always understand perfectly well why a game performs or doesn't perform, but we do have quite some insight. Um, I would also recommend, like, if you're thinking about 
what kind of game you want to make for your console, I strongly recommend like playing a few at the very top and playing a few at the very bottom and, and like getting an impression of, okay, so what works and what doesn't. Um, you're going to need Air Console Hero for that, but let me know and I'll give you an access code. Yeah, and then of course we have a lot in between where it's just like various degrees of cool game, but not instantly satisfying enough or like um, a bit too complicated for a casual audience or cool mechanics, but not very pretty, that, that kind of thing. Um, what kind of games are really good rated? Five minutes gameplay. Uh, I'm not sure I understand the questions correctly. Um, so, I, like, I, I think I think it's about like how long gameplay rounds should be for Air Console. So we have a lot of games that offer like five minute rounds of gameplay, but you keep playing for a while. So I I would say that in order to be successful, you need to be interesting for longer than five minutes because uh, otherwise people will play it once and then uh, then not play it again and not return for it. Um, so here, the, the top few games like Go Car Go and Burning Rubber and Snowbird Buddies, they all are like level-based where you do a race um, for maybe five, seven minutes. But then, but then you've only seen one map or you've only seen one level. So then you play another race and then the total session, your, your total play session comes down to maybe 20, 30 minutes. And something similar applies to most of our games where it's like, easy to get started and, and you, you do have natural exit points, but you, you want to keep playing. Um, one big exception to that is Mega Monster Party, which is like this Mario Party type game where you start a full like board game thingy and have like mini games. And here a playthrough really takes one hour to do. And um, that's so far, that's the only one. And it was only launched a few weeks ago. So um, we'll see how well that does. This is our biggest project so far. Um, but yeah, we also have like things like, uh, no heroes here takes definitely takes longer to play. Like you can easily keep yourself busy for, for an hour or more with that. And sniper team three air is also something where you're like a level takes at least 10 minutes, maybe 15. Um, and you also probably want to play several in a row. Um, what I definitely notice is that games with, like brief gameplay rounds where after a round or two, you feel like you've seen it and it doesn't offer anything more yet. Those do not perform well. Like they, they just, a user plays them, has fun with them and then, and then they're done and then they have no need to, to return. Um, that's something that we see a lot at the, like towards the bottom of the list. Uh, is there any save progression in Air Console games? Can you save info related to a specific user in their Air Console account? Yes, you can. Um, this uh, is part of our API. Uh, the relevant functions are called persistent data. Um, so this here uh, is also like you find on developer's documentation. If you click API, you get to this page, which explains all of the functions that we offer and uh, their properties, their parameters, etc. And here we have... Uh, we also have a, a high score API, uh, meaning that you can you can do like online high scores and, and store data uh, for that. And we have the persistent data API, uh, which you can store and request. Um, and this is really what you want to use if you want to store like unlocked levels, unlocked characters, um, character configurations, maybe gameplay settings if you offer any. Um, has this player seen the tutorial or do you force the tutorial on them? That kind of stuff is, is really where, where persistent data comes in. Um, many of our games use it. Like we, we have some games that really have like level progress where you're like on a, on a storyline or an adventure and you want to continue where you left off. And we also have many where it's just used for what does your character look like? Uh, what, selections did you choose last time so that we can give the player a bit of uh, convenience in that regard. Um, so yes, this exists and uh, we encourage using it. Yeah, we also have a, I mean, if you're, if you're starting to look into what is possible with Air Console, I definitely also recommend like looking through here, what is possible. Um, 
like the whole premium and ads API is usually only relevant towards like later in the development, uh, but you do need to call Air Console ads um, because there are there are ad breaks for free users, so that like at opportune moments in the game, you can say, okay, now an ad can be called, and then we handle. Can that ad actually be called? Like, has it been long enough since the last ad? And is there actually no premium user in the session? That kind of thing. We've also recently added translations, uh, which our our core game, like our main games, are now doing. But again, that is something that is not not instantly relevant. Uh, we offer these controller inputs like device motion and vibrate, which is to bypass um, iOS and Android specific, mostly iOS specific uh, hiccups with uh, with getting this data. Is there a size limit for game files since it's online? Yes, uh, there is. Um, we generally encourage initial downloads to be 50 megabyte max, um, but you can use asset bundles for additional um, additional data. So. Well, what is important to us is just that the game loads relatively fast because a lot of people don't have that good internet and um, games loading too long is, is something that uh, like a complaint that we often get from our users, which is why we've, uh, we've introduced that limit basically. Um, but a lot, of our, a lot of our developers are using asset bundles now. So they, they have like, their upload is bigger, like the, the, the game that they actually upload is bigger, but it's uh, it doesn't download all at once for the user. So, but it downloads in chunks, like you first load the menu and then you load the character selection and then you load the actual level. Um, so there are definitely like tools for you to, to be able to um, get some content in there. Like we have one of the games that we recently launched was originally a PlayStation 4 game. Um, and that still worked, like that was still able to to host that online and with the asset bundles to uh, to get all their data in there. Um, we have a technical requirements guide somewhere. Where is it? Where is it? Here. Oh, and that's this is also relevant. Um, so technical requirements, like just the, the basics. Um, this is also where you find this fifty megabyte. Uh, limit our total required storage is about 500 uh, total maximum storage sorry is about 500 megabytes usually we don't go up usually we don't go up that high um yeah there's also some limitations on ram but for most of our developers this is not an issue it's not like it's not a, a like something that limits them significantly uh, this presentation, uh, I, I quickly mentioned before, if you're curious about how latency works, uh, it's a bit of an old old uh, presentation. That's why it looks outdated, but the, the information in it is accurate. Um, basically, how uh, the phones and screen communicate, uh, you can look at this for some more detail. Um, you can find this on developers.airconsole.com in the guide section on low latency, if you want to know more details uh, since you asked before. Yeah, and, and these these guides, um, generally very useful part of the Airconsole documentation, very useful for you to have a look around here. What makes a good smartphone controller? What are your options, like different layouts, different situations? What is Good screen space usage versus bad screen space usage. Um, why you shouldn't use joysticks and D-pads if you can avoid it, um, because it just it always it's not ideal for the smartphone controller. Um, yeah, bunch of stuff on here that is useful, even if you're still like in the in the idea finding phase. Yeah, um, no new questions right now. We are reaching the, the end of the hour. Um, I wonder if there's anything else important I should mention. Um, maybe another useful site, uh, airconsole.com slash play. You can see uh, 
an overview of all of our games and also the, the total number of currently available games. This changes every few weeks because we, we do release relatively frequently. Um, but yeah, this gives you an overview of, it's also sorted by popularity. So again, the ones at the top are the ones that are most played. The ones at the bottom are the ones that are least played, um, which can also give you an impression of like what is what is appealing to people. Um, yeah, like I said, I, I do recommend uh, trying it out yourself, like trying Air Console, trying a few different games. Um, if you have a game idea and like you want feedback on that in early concept phase, absolutely do reach out. I, I'll, um, I'm glad to give feedback for, for at concept stage as well. Um, and then, yeah, I'm, I'm also used to trying prototypes and, and giving feedback for that. I, I can't always invest tons of time. I cannot always promise that I'll get uh, like a big group together to play it. But generally, like uh, based on based on, I, I can always give like I can give some valid ad or so like valuable advice based on all the games I've seen over the years and all the games that I've seen perform well or not perform well on Air Console. I should be able to offer quite some insight there if you if you're interested in that. Yeah. So. Uh... If there are any more questions, like I know there's some people who have courses starting soon from uh, some messages I've got. So uh, if there's any more questions, uh, well, you have your email address there for yeah, Alice. Exactly. So we'll probably put it um, in a Discord message or uh, maybe I'll put it under the recording, like I'm recording it now. So I'll put the video on our private channel and I'll put the the links to uh, Air Console website, the documentation and Alice's email address. Um, and once again, you can contact her, you can go through me if you want, you can go through the, the club if ever you want more information on that. Um, so yeah, uh, if yeah. there's, for the projects, I, if you want to contact her uh, privately, go ahead. I encourage it, like she said, uh, for students especially, it's important to work on projects, like actual projects and finish them and like publish them. That's great experience. If you go for a job later on in the industry, uh, it's something that really makes you stand out. Uh, so uh, I think this is a great opportunity for uh, the club. And uh, we'll probably get back to you for um, for the members. Like if I, we're probably gonna organize like a, a group project for the club. Uh, so maybe like, maybe five to eight people, but probably the people who are here today. Uh, so we'll probably uh, reconvene at a later point uh, to discuss this and I'll contact you when, when the time comes. Absolutely, very cool. Um, yeah, please really, if you do have questions, uh, reach out per email. Uh, I've also left my Twitter handle, which is a hot mess of other things, like of private and professional things, but still like if you wanna, if you wanna stay in touch, you can follow me there. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm 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 open for for questions and uh, advice if you need any, and I'd be I'd be happy to join any of you for a project yeah. like that. So thank you, Alice, for your time. I know it's with the time zone differences, uh, it's not always easy to set up stuff like this. So thank you very much for taking uh, some. Of your your private time after we're after hours to uh, <laughs> give this little presentation. Uh, very appreciated. So with that, thank you for your interest. Yep. Yeah, so with that, I'll stop the recording. And if anyone wants to maybe activate their mic or ask a question, you can. I will stick around for a few more minutes, and then we'll uh, end the meeting. Yes.